This is Six Garden Lane, Heaton, near Bradford in the UK. A more innocuous sounding address it would be hard to find. But in 1977, it was inhabited by Peter Sutcliffe, a man who would become known by his far more notorious nickname, the Yorkshire Ripper. When Sutcliffe was finally caught and tried for the murders of 13 women and attempted murders of seven more, he had been terrorizing the streets of Yorkshire for five years, from 1975 to 1980. Most of those he attacked were sex workers, but not all. 16-year-old Jane MacDonald broke the cycle when her body was found in June 1977. Sutcliffe claimed to have been ordered to commit the murders by voices in his head, originating, he said, when he heard Jesus calling We Be Echo to him from a headstone. Throughout the period in which he carried out his attacks, Sutcliffe appeared to be living the life of a regular citizen, happily married to wife Sonia. Yet his modus operandi was particularly brutal, as he preferred to kill with blunt instruments like hammers and screwdrivers. One of the most remarkable facts about the case is the mistakes and misfortunes that characterized it, leading Sutcliffe to slip through the police's fingers on several occasions. Early on, a witness misidentified a car, resulting in 300 police officers working on 12,500 statements needlessly. Several of his victims survived, providing police with the description of their attacker. Sutcliffe was questioned by the police many times over the years, but in the days before computers and cross-referencing software, connections were simply not made in the massive amount of evidence building up. There was also the fruitless search for a man with a Wearside accent, thanks to a hoax message from a man who claimed to be the murderer. In 2005, John Humble was sentenced to eight years in jail for attempting to pervert the course of justice. In November 1980, one of Sutcliffe's friends reported him to the police as a suspect, but again the information disappeared into the reams of evidence collected. In early January 1981, though, the breakthrough finally came, and it was pure luck. Sutcliffe was with sex worker Oliver Reavers in Broomhill, Sheffield, when he was arrested for the false number plates on his car. The next day, a knife, hammer and rope were discovered dumped at the place of his arrest. After two days of questioning and the revelation that under his clothes, Sutcliffe was wearing a strangely fashioned garment made to protect his knees and expose his groin, Sutcliffe suddenly announced he was the Yorkshire Ripper and began to describe all of his attacks. On the 6th of January, he was charged and he went to trial in May. Claiming that he was the tool of God's will, he pleaded guilty to 13 counts of manslaughter on the grounds of diminished responsibility. Four separate psychiatrists diagnosed paranoid schizophrenia, but the judge, Justice Borum, rejected the plea and Sutcliffe was tried by a jury, found guilty of murder and sentenced to life in Parker's prison. After attacks from other prisoners, in 1984 he was moved to the High Security Psychiatric Hospital Broadmoor, where he remains to this day. The deadliest terrorist attack on US soil prior to September the 11th, 2001, was a homegrown affair. At just after 9 a.m. on Wednesday the 19th of April, 1995, a 2,300 kilogram bomb made up of fertilizer and nitromethane was detonated next to the Alfred P. Marat Federal Building, a government office complex in downtown Oklahoma City. The explosives had been packed into a rented rider truck by ex-soldier Timothy McVeigh and his co-conspirator Terry Nichols. The final death toll was 168 people, 19 of them children, many from the building's daycare center just above where McVeigh left the truck. There were over 800 wounded. McVeigh was stopped and arrested within 90 minutes of the explosion. During his trial, he declared his hatred of the US government. Found guilty on 11 counts of murder and conspiracy, McVeigh was executed by lethal injection in 2001. Terry Nichols is currently serving 161 concurrent life sentences while a third accomplice, Michael Fortier, testified against McVeigh and received a reduced sentence.